Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! I used to work as a mall security officer in Northern Virginia a few years ago and boy, let me tell you the things I've seen while being a mall cop could fill a book. <laughs> But there is one particular incident that stands out as a classic entitled people's story. And it all went down at the Polo Ralph Lauren store. It was a typical day at the mall when I received a call on my radio about a disturbance at the Polo Ralph Lauren store. I sighed and headed over there expecting to deal with the usual shoplifting or minor altercation. Little did I know that this would be a whole different level of craziness. When I arrived at the store, I saw the manager standing in front of it looking utterly exasperated. Standing in front of him was a 27-year-old woman with a shopping cart and a baby in tow. And she was yelling at the manager like there was no tomorrow. Her voice was a shrill, piercing scream that grated on my nerves instantly. I introduced myself and asked her what the problem was. She responded by yelling at me. This store is discriminating against me because I'm a mother with a baby. Her words were a jumbled mess of rage. I tried to maintain my composure and ask calmly, could you please explain what happened? But she just continued screaming. This manager won't let me run around the store with my shopping cart. Now, let me give you some context. Like most stores in the mall, this one had a designated area to park shopping carts. It was a matter of practicality as a store simply wasn't designed to accommodate people pushing carts around. I explained this to her, telling her that it was a well-established policy and not meant to discriminate against anyone. But she wasn't having it. She screamed back at me, It's being mean to me. Discriminating against mothers like me. I tried to reason with her, saying, Ma'am, if we can have a civil conversation, we can work this out. But her voice grew even more shrill and she yelled even louder. By this point, she was drawing the attention of other customers and anyone who happened to walk by. She started blocking people from entering the store, shouting about how the store was discriminating against mothers. I knew I had to take control of the situation. I told her firmly, your behavior is against mall policies. If you do not quiet down and stop interfering with the store and other customers, I will have to escort you out of the mall. Instead of calming down, she turned up the volume, adding a generous amount of profanity into the mix. She even began physically grabbing other customers to prevent them from entering the store. I had to draw the line. I told her that her actions constituted assault and that she needed to leave the mall immediately or risk being arrested for trespassing and assault if any of the customers decided to press charges. But she just kept on with her aggressive behavior. Frustrated, I transmitted on the radio for supervision to hear. I am banning this individual from the mall property. If she doesn't leave willingly, we will need the police. And her response was a profanity-laced tirade that would make a sailor plush. Unfortunately for her, the police heard every word. They assured me they would be on their way shortly. Meanwhile, she continued her rampage, harassing customers, screaming at the top of her lungs, and using language that was beyond inappropriate. You could hear her from halfway across the mall. When the police officer arrived, I quickly explained the situation to him. I informed him that she was now banned from the mall and was refusing to leave. So, we want her arrested for trespassing. But she wasn't about to make things easy. While I was talking to the officer, she tried to get in our faces and yelled so loudly that it was hard to hear anything. The officer, to his credit, remained calm and told her she needed to quiet down and leave the mall. He scoffed, shouting, I can stand here if I want. It's a free country. Then she launched into a personal attack, calling the officer a big and comparing him to the Gestapo. She accused the police of being fascists who discriminated against mothers with children. The officer had had enough. He warned her that if she didn't comply, he'd have to take further action. When she still refused to leave, he pulled out his handcuffs and that's when things took a violent turn. She struck the officer and pushed him away. And to his credit, this officer's training kicked in. He swiftly turned her around, got her in cuffs, 
and informed her that she would be charged with trespassing, assaulting a police officer, resisting arrest and causing a public disturbance. At this point, her demeanor changed dramatically. She went from being a raging storm to a stunned, silent mess. As the reality of her situation sank in, tears welled up in her eyes and I told her she was also banned from the mall for an entire year. When the officer called for child protective services to come and take her baby, she nearly crumbled. She struggled to stand, her face was pale and her hands trembling. I didn't know what would happen to her after they took her, but one thing was clear. She had learned the hard way that entitlement could only take you so far. It was just another ordinary afternoon as I drove back home from a long day at work. I had my trusty old car, not flashy or extravagant, but it got the job done. As I approached the stoplight, I noticed a stunning Lamborghini stopping beside me. Its sleek lines and vibrant red color immediately caught my attention. With the window rolled down, I couldn't help but strike up a conversation with the Lamborghini's owner. Hey there, nice ride, I shouted with a friendly grin. The Lamborghini owner, a guy in his mid-thirties, looked over and smiled. Thanks, man, it's a sweet ride for sure. We began chatting about cars, life and everything in between. Surprisingly, he was down-to-earth and friendly and not the snobby type you might expect to be driving such an expensive car. Must be a plan to drive this baby around town, I commented. He chuckled. Oh, it definitely is. The engine roars like a beast. As we continued chatting, the red light still held us in place. Then a thought crossed my mind. I had to ask, hey, do you mind driving the engine for me? I've always wanted to hear one of these babies in action. He seemed happy to oblige, probably used to getting requests like this. He revved the engine twice and it sounded like thunder rolling through the streets. Nice, right? He grinned, and I nodded enthusiastically. Yeah, that's incredible. God bless, man. Have a great day. You too, man. Take care. Just as the light was about to turn green, drama unfolded in the car ahead of us. Out stepped a woman with an angry expression all over her face. She looked like the archetype of an entitled person. Uh, what's her problem? I mumbled. More to myself than to the Lamborghini owner. She stormed over to the guy in the Lamborghini. Her finger pointed accusingly at him. Think you're so fancy with your loud car? Do you think you're better than everyone else because of it? The guy in a Lamborghini tried to explain. No, ma'am, I... But she cut him off, her voice growing even more shrill. You people with the expensive toys, you make me sick. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. What the hell was that woman talking about? The Lamborghini owner rolled up his window, clearly trying to disengage from the confrontation. But the woman wasn't having it. She marched right up to his car and began hitting his side mirror. Whoa, this is getting out of hand. I said to myself, I decided to stay put just in case the Lamborghini owner needed a witness for the police. The woman continued to pound on the mirror until it finally shattered. Now, the light had turned green and traffic started moving, but I couldn't leave the scene. The woman had caused significant damage and the Lamborghini owner might need some help sorting this out. Finally, the woman seemed satisfied with the damage she'd inflicted. She turned and started to make her way back to her car with a self-satisfied smirk on her face. But the Lamborghini owner had other plans. He stepped out of his car, holding something in his hand. He looked over at me and said calmly, You please call 911 and ask them to send the cops here? Sure. I said that, pulling out my phone and dialing the emergency number. The Lamborghini owner continued. Oh, and an ambulance too. I got confused for a second but decided to relay his request to the dispatcher and watched as he walked toward the woman's car. My heart was bounding as I watched things go down. I had no idea what he was planning to do, but I had a feeling it wouldn't be good. He reached into her car through the open window and that's when I saw it stun gun in his hand. My jaw dropped as he pressed it against the woman and delivered the jolt of electricity. The woman's screams pierced through the air as she convulsed from the shock. It was intense and I couldn't believe my eyes. I had never seen anything like this. After a few seconds that felt like an eternity, the Lamborghini owner calmly walked back to his car and waited for the police. I couldn't just sit there. I cautiously approached the woman's car. She was still inside, trying to collect herself. But she was furious. Are you okay? I asked, genuinely concerned. She shot me a terrifying look and tried to scream. Murderer! He's a murderer! 
murderer. I shook my head, realizing how deluded she was. Ma'am, you attacked him first and destroyed his car. What did you expect? Defending himself. The police arrived shortly after and the officers began taking statements. And EMTs checked on the woman, who didn't really appear to have any serious injuries. The Lamborghini owner explained what had happened to the police, emphasizing that he had felt threatened and unsafe, leading him to use a stun gun. He showed them the damage to his car as evidence. As the chaos began to settle down, I realized that my role as a witness was over after I gave my statement. The police cleared me to leave the scene and I approached the Lamborghini owner. Thanks for sticking around, man. I appreciate it. He said, his voice still calm despite the whole ordeal. I replied, no problem. Glad I could help. If you need anything down the road, here is my number. He took my contact information and we exchanged a nod of understanding. Then I got back into my car and continued my trip home, leaving behind that unforgettable Lamborghini encounter. It's been 10 days since that day and I haven't received a call from anyone regarding the situation. Sadly, I don't know the current state of the legal proceedings, but I truly hope that the Lamborghini owner isn't in any kind of trouble and hope that Karen gets locked up for the unacceptable hatred she has shown toward that poor guy that day for no reason. Horrible woman. I will update this post and let you guys know once I figure out what went down. I'm 18 years old and life has dealt me a rough hand marked by a severe case of PTSD stemming from my biological dad. While I don't experience flashbacks frequently, when I do, they are very terrifying. I scream, thrash about, and most unsettingly revert back to acting like a frightened seven-year-old. This incident with an entitled mom happened just before school started, and I was with my mom's stepdad and brother at the store. My family is a mix of heights, and this becomes important later in this story. My mom stands at 5 feet 3 inches, my stepdad towers above at 6 feet 7, and a half inches. And my brother is just an inch taller than me, measuring 5 feet 5 inches. I am 5 feet 4, and all these height differences played a crucial role in what unfolded. We were at the store perusing the toy section, exploring Nerf guns and dolls with movable limbs because I wanted to try my hand at doll customizing. As we ventured into different sections, my mom and brother gravitated toward the Nerf guns. While I ventured down the doll aisle to find the perfect one with movable limbs. I finally stumbled upon the holy grail of adjustable dolls when a hand grabbed my wrist. No one else was around, so I turned to find a woman with her mask hanging haphazardly on her ear. And to my dismay, a girl from my school. Now here is how they exchanged unfold. Titled mother says, you're too old for dolls, put it down. Ma'am, I'm using the doll for customs. It's something I want to try. Before I could react, she tore the doll from my hand and placed it back on a shelf. The plastic edges from the packaging left a nasty cut on my hand, which I concealed beneath my sleeve. I was desperate to leave, but the entitled girl blocked my way. Give me your mask, she demanded. No, this is the only mask I have. Without hesitation, the girl yanked the mask from my face, shredding my earpiece and cutting my face with her razor-like nail. I scream not just from the pain but also from the horrifying flashbacks of my bio dad reaching for my head. Fritly, I tried to escape but the entitled mother grabbed me. My stepdad intervened, pulling her away from me as I sought comfort by curling into his protective arms. Meanwhile, the entitled mother and her daughter were yelling for employees and security. My mom and brother rushed to console me as store guards and an employee arrived on a scene. Guard 1 says, What happened here? And the entitled girl answers, Batman attacked my mom. Arrest him. The entitled mother continued her shrieking, claiming her leg was broken from the non-existent attack. Guard 2 approached my family, seeking their side of the story. Mom tells him, Sir, it's a misunderstanding. My boyfriend didn't hurt her. Brother says, That's right. My dad would never do that. My stepdad then asked me if I was alright and if I needed to go outside. I assured him I was okay, but I needed some time to calm down. In my dad's comforting embrace, I slowly regained my composure as the employee and guards pieced together the chaotic situation just by looking at my bloody face. 
When the guards escorted the entitled mother and girl outside, the entitled girl made one final menacing move. She lunged at me, grabbing my hair and forcefully yanking me to my knees. My family recognized a red flag instantly, being on my knees triggered my worst memories. Panic surged through me and I let out a gut-trenching scream. Lost in a world of flashbacks of my bio dad's torment, my stepdad rushed to pull me away from the girl and carried me outside, holding me as I sobbed uncontrollably. Unfortunately, outside a police car was parked with two police officers inside. They saw a tall, burly man carrying a distraught boy and sprang into action, attempting to arrest my dad before my mom and brother arrived, explaining the situation and preventing the misunderstanding. Ultimately, the police officers entered the store and arrested the entitled mother and her daughter for their outrageous behavior. I, 28 female, find myself in a situation that's been weighing heavily on my conscience, and I need an unbiased opinion to help me sort it out. A few months ago, my sister, 32, asked me to move in with her. She was going through a separation I needed someone to help with the bills, especially since she wasn't fully back to work yet. I agreed to help her out and it seemed like a reasonable arrangement at the time. I cover most of the rent and bills because of my job and I work from home, which is where the trouble began. Living under the same roof was my sister and her precious 5 months old baby, my niece. My sister primarily worked part-time and on the day she did, our mother would usually take care of my niece. Meanwhile, I was stuck in my home office, which had become my sanctuary of sorts. My job often required me to wear noise-canceling headphones because it involved a lot of concentration. And my sister and niece weren't exactly quiet. I even had my own room with a bathroom, which I thought was perfect for getting my work done without any distraction. I made a request to my sister. I told her that if she needed anything while I was working with my headphones on, she should enter my room and tap me to get my attention. I explained that without this signal, I wouldn't hear her. I wouldn't know if she needed anything. This agreement was meant to avoid any misunderstanding and ensure my niece's safety. However, my sister seemed to forget this arrangement repeatedly. It all came to a head on a particularly busy Friday. I ended up working for 12 long hours with only snacks to keep me going. I was fully engrossed in my work, unaware of any developments in the outside world. My work desk faced away from the door and I had yet to see my sister entering my room as we had agreed. But all did I know that this day would become a turning point in our relationship. My sister had to run some errands related to her work that day and she didn't have anyone else to leave my niece with. So she decided to leave her in my care for a few hours. The problem was she never informed me of her plans. She didn't follow the simple protocol we had agreed upon, tapping me on the shoulder to get my attention. As a result, my niece was left unattended for over three hours, crying her tiny heart out. I had no idea what was happening since I was focused on my work, and my headphones drowned out the world. The explosive climax came when my sister returned home. I was still hard at work with my noise-canceling headphones on. She stormed into my room, ripped the headphones from my head, then unleashed a torrent of anger and insults. She called me a jerk for neglecting my knees and failing to attend to her needs. I was bewildered, confused, and shocked by her outbursts. I tried to explain that I had no idea she had left my niece with me, let alone that the baby was crying. My sister's anger didn't abate though. She accused me of intentionally neglecting my niece and being indifferent to her well-being. She made it sound like I had maliciously ignored her cries despite my explanations. To add to the confusion, I checked my phone after this hated exchange only to find no messages or missed calls from my sister. It seemed that she hadn't even attempted to contact me during her absence. My sister hasn't spoken to me since that incident and tension looms heavy in our shared home. I am left wondering if I'm the jerk in the situation as my sister believes or if this was a genuine misunderstanding that spiraled out of control. And now with some comments on the post. Someone saying, not the jerk. It's crucial to consistently and verbally confirm with someone when leaving your job and their care. A mere announcement is insufficient. You shouldn't presume they heard you. Request a verbal acknowledgement. In this situation, her mistake was failing to do so, not yours. 
you are entirely blameless in this matter and you are not the jerk. Another commenter agreed to this by saying, this is no different than someone who drops the kid off on a front Porsche and drives off without even ringing the bell to make sure you're actually home. Completely negligent and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she did it on purpose. She knew OP didn't really hear her but left anyway cause she figured it'll probably be fine. OP will probably hear the baby if she cried or something and better to ask forgiveness than permission. Not the jerk. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.